2.1 seconds. Oh, oh. Right. problem. Doyle kept it in. Here's the Jack Jumpers chance. McVay, two on the clock. Oh, oh. oh. the guy with the shot of his life. Tasmania win game three. And silence Melbourne with the moment of NBL 24. That's one of the biggest shots we've seen in the history of the NBL. It will if they go on to win it, that's for sure. Want to shoot it, baby. Come on, I just want one more. It's going to win this. I mean, I'm super proud of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How emotional are you right now, Scott Roth? Uh, emotional. Uh, all these fans here, again, before this ball went up in this series, we won. Tasmania caught fire in that fourth quarter from deep, led by Majuk Dang, with so many guys contributed and allowed Jack McVay to get into the position to knock down one of the biggest shots. And this is no hyperbole. That is one of the biggest shots we've ever seen in NBL history. Right around Australia, wherever you might be, Derek Rucker, I think, just saying what everybody was thinking at that particular time, and even a couple of days later, it still stands as one of the greatest NBL shots we will ever see. It was emotional post-game, and now we head to Tasmania for Game 4 with the JJ's home court advantage trying to bring home their first ever NBL championship. Leonard Copeland knows what that's about. What's happening, brother? Oh, man, I'm, I'm psyched. I, oh, you just oh. my word, emotional, man. I mean, it's emotional, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's you, you, said, you said you were sitting at home, you had tears in your eyes. No, I jumped off the couch. Like a, you uh, crying? No, I wasn't crying, but I was, I was up and I was about, eyes. and I was... It was emotional, man. Yeah, when you made that shot, you know, it was something that you haven't seen in this yeah. league in, mm -hmm. in a very... I, maybe you've never seen it. Liam Santa Maria's in the house. How are you, buddy? What's happening, man? We were in the stadium. It was, it was insane. <sighs> it was unbelievable. I was in complete shock. It's just not something you expect. Was it quiet? Did it get quiet in the stadium? No, I was right in amongst the jack jumpers. Right. I was so, right in the heart of the jack jumpers. Then, how did they sport. get that many tickets? I don't know. How I, did they get that many tickets? I have a feeling it hasn't quite been reciprocated back the other way because <laughs> the stadium is only half the size. That's right. So it's kind of hard, but there was a lot of JJs mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Just uh, Liam was smack bang in the middle of the Tassie fans, mainly because last year he hated sucking Tassie. Up? Was he sucking he's, up? Was he's he sucking, sucking up? up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but yeah. the fact is, I was on the other side of the court. It was. It was stunned. Silence, and it wasn't just necessarily the actual shot, which mm. was surreal. We'll get to that in a moment. Ooh. But eight seconds earlier, Melbourne had the ball, and there's still a foul to give. And, and we're like, Matthew Dalladovas got the pill, and from that to that, it went from everyone standing in sort of half celebration to, hang on a second, <laughs> this game's over. Hey, listen, hey, this nuts. is what this is the beautiful thing about sport. Yeah, yep. you just never know what's around the next mm. corner. That's right. And it's the beautiful thing about this league and elite sport mm. at this type of level is you've got guys who can do unbelievable things. We marvel at the NBA, the athleticism and the, you know the dunks that they throw down, but the the skill yeah. of these guys to be able to do what Jack McVay did <laughs> in that moment. Uh, and it was just an epic game, too. Everything that led up to the greatest shot in NBL yep. history. Before we get to all of that, you're right. Let's just go back to the shot. I wanted to show the shot for the whole 40 minutes of the show. Mm -hmm. I've been overruled, but at least we'll get a couple of times in. So, Daly throws it away. Milton Doyle weirdly saves it when he didn't have to. And then Jack McVay just took his time between the legs. Daly in his face. Just like he's shooting in the driveway, he has been quoted, I paraphrase, I blacked out, I don't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, Jack McVeigh, I wish I could black out and do amazing things because he felt like he was in total control, Leonard Copeland, of that moment. No one takes a shot that far out and he had time <laughs> to get to the basket. So, my, he was brave, it was daring, it was emotional. Look at the... Who takes a shot that far out, Liam? <laughs> you played the game. Yeah. Okay, now you got three seconds left in the game. Yeah. You, when, when you cross half court, you're going to try to either get fouled or you're going to try to make a layup. Yeah. But to pull up <laughs> from where he pulled up yep. and hit that shot, mm -hmm. he's one of the brave. It was meant to be. Mm -hmm. It was those shots that are meant to be. He was brave. He was daring. It was emotional. Yeah, you're right. It, it wasn't the percentage play, no. was it? Like, there's four seconds still on the clock. They're over the foul limit. You only need a buck, like a bucket of any sort mm. to win the game here. So the percentage play is to continue to attack, put the pressure on the defense, put heat on the rim, put pressure on the officials. <laughs> or give the ball to somebody who's gonna, we think is going to make it. Or yeah, but this it. is, you know, in that sort of moment, in this type oh. of situation, uh, all that goes out the window. Yeah. This is a moment made for special individuals. Mm. And it's, he's not, that's not an overnight success. Mm -mm. No. We know for two years we've been talking about how he's a big shot taker yeah. and a big shot maker. Mm. And it's the time he puts into working on his craft, the time he puts into working on his mental state. So, when, yeah, he said he blacked out. But you know what he also said is when Milt fired the ball to him, he said, 
yes, I get to take this shot. Wow. And, and that was obvious because oh. he was deliberate and he knew what he was doing. Yep. The moment he got it, it was, he didn't panic for one millisecond. Yep. And that, that continual talk and the newsletter and what he does on social media and, and speaks about what... When he looks in that mirror, you shared that, that quote the other day on, on Twitter. When he looks in the mirror and he goes, I make big shots. And it was quite <laughs> evident that he had the total confidence in himself dribbling the ball up in front of 10,000 people in the biggest game of the year that it was going up. Now, was it going to go in? Well, that we had to wait a split second to see, but he just knew the entire time. There was no panic on Jack McVay, and that's tough. tough. Keeping in mind, Dilton, uh, Milton Doyle took a pretty tough shot on the previous possession. It was nowhere near it. It's not a uh, prayer. It's not a Hail Mary. No. You, you know what's funny about not that? Not at all. He walks off as if he, he goes, I told you so. Believe it. Because he has been telling us He's so. He's been telling us so for He's a long He's been showing us so. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. He's built for that moment. <sighs> yeah, it was, this it guy's was special. This guy's special. Well, and now we go back to Tasmania, and we'll get to game four in a moment. we get to game four in Tassie, and that mm. joint is going to be <laughs> rocking. Are you going? Am I going? Well, of course I'm bloody well going. I don't miss <laughs> anything major in this country. Okay, this bro. Major yeah. This country. As it gets. Well, the, world, the, the world, the uh, world. I was going to say that I've never been in an arena more stunned than on Sunday. Yeah. The only time, this is legit, and I am very privileged to go to a lot of sport around the world. Mm -hmm. If you're an NFL fan, the Seahawks should have won the Super Bowl in 2015, and rather than, than run it, they threw it, and there was an interception. Yeah. It's the only time I have ever, ever been in a stadium where the whole joint was stood there going, what the bloody hell happened? And that's yeah. what happened on Sunday. That's, well, not the whole joint. There was a well, big... There was. The Ant Army there was. That were there going nuts. The photo was cool. Now, before we get to everything else, we need to talk about where this does sit in the history of great NBL game winners. Now, NBL has thrown up on our socials to go back to the first ever NBL championship. Oh, what a court. Albert Park. What a Albert Park. Both of you men did some of your best work there. This is how the league started, boys. Which no three point line either. Look at no three point line. <laughs> Feet of bits. Probably no stats. A little backdoor action. Just lay it in. Game over. Let's go down the pub for uh, four days because we've just won the first ever <laughs> NBL championship. Okay, let's go to 1994. Of course, that wonderful North Melbourne Giants team. We'll let the celebrations roll out because people are going nuts. Daryl McDonald, Brett Brown, game one in overtime. Clipsal Powerhouse on the legend that is Brett Maher. And D-Max says, see ya. Let's go home to Glasshouse and win game two by 28. That was after a Mark Davis nice baseline jumper tied it up. Huge Deep win. Shot. And they went back and won that. Have a look at this. A walk-off fadeaway by a Beckway to win the championship in New Zealand 2015. There's a few legends in that celebration right there led by Thomas Abercrombie. But that's as close that as you can get to a childhood dream. Really was. Look at the clock. Dean Vickerman involved in this yep. as well as yep. the head coach Gate of switch. the Breakers. Pandemonium. Bang. Absolute scenes. Cairns Taipans, a fairy tale season. It ended with one of that. And then, of course, Jack McVay today. Liam? There were others as well. Maybe yeah. not in grand finals, That's but the we, we Rob have, Rose, right? Yeah. We are focusing on grand finals because this the is, moment. This is a great shot in, in NBL history. Accelerated. This, this is the greatest shot in NBL history. I don't I'm know. getting up, Copes. I'm getting up. Here we go. You have heard that? I am. It just take, I, took me 24 hours to get there. We, we had a heated... Off-air NBL overtime discussion post-game, and he tried to argue with me that it I wasn't. Just, hey, listen, if you're going to say greatest anything in yep. NBL history, I'm mm -hmm. just going to take a moment. Yeah. Yep. I need, to think, I need to think on it. Now, he was there straight away, and credit to you, Cam. Thank you, Beth. I just, <laughs> I just needed to take a moment, but I'm there now. Without yes. a I said it this morning on NBL now. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's mm -hmm. the greatest shot in NBL history. I'm sure all of those other shots were great for those guys yeah. as well. Of course. But this one, from where he shot the ball, mm -hmm. From where they came from, to be in the stadium with 10,000 or 9,000 people screaming against you, and to walk off like you knew that thing was going yeah. in, oh, the, the confidence, yeah. the confidence that he's mm -hmm. had in the last couple of years. It's epic. It it's a, look, at, look, at, look at the walk. He's got the swagger, <laughs> bro. Swagger. Oh, he's got the, oh, look at him. It was swagger. I love it. Come on, man. Now, it's not, uh, it, it didn't result, it shot in that moment didn't result in them hoisting the trophy. Right. Like it did with Peter Vitals and it did with Akine Bekwe. Mm -hmm. Does that matter? Is it still the greatest? I think it does matter because Ooh. you got to understand. It's not the greatest? It's, it's a great shot. Mm -hmm. But the greatest means they won, they won a championship. Now, if, if Tasmania end up losing this, we, we're still going to say it's the greatest shot in NBL history. Mm -hmm. We'll say it's a great shot, but 
They have to win it. it, it they have to win the championship for it. Okay, the well then, chance. so you're saying if they don't win it, Liam, you're going to take walk that back. If they do win it, will you be there? I will be there. Okay. I will be there because that got them to to the to the trophy. Yeah. All right, they, uh, Jamie Faye was great, but let's focus a little on Majuk Ding because. Mm-hmm. This guy's had some troubles this year with injuries, hasn't been able to consistently yep. get going. But this is part of Scott Roth's unbelievable skill that he makes every single player believe that they can stand up in the biggest moment. And this guy has played a great grand final series before, going mm-hmm. back to 2018, yeah. when he was member of 36. Uh. The moment does not worry him. And the reason the JJs were able to find themselves out of a seven-point hole was this particular guy. Look, he just wanted it more, mm-hmm. and it's fun to watch because he's a fun player when he's going, Liam. Oh, it was so fun to watch. He's, you know, he showed a glimpse of this in the semi-final series, mm-hmm. game two, 18 points. And Scott Ross said, yes, great. I've got this ace up my sleeve. Then in that fourth quarter, it started, it didn't start as a, it, with him at the five, that fourth quarter. Krizlovic was in there and he was at the four. He went bang, bang, back to back threes. And that gave Scott the, the confidence to say, you know what, I'm gonna shift this around. Mm. Magne's out, Lee's out. Now Krizlovic's going to come out and Majuk Deng's going to slide to the five. And it put a lot of pressure on Melbourne United. They were in panic stations from that point on. Now that's a fine move and it's all good and well. But it's the combination of that and how he was playing. Yes. What he was doing. Knocking down the three balls and then ripping it on JLA, on Hook Porty and dunking it on Luke Travers and then attacking the Joe Luala Chul closeout and one finish at the Cup. Huge credit to Majuk Deng because think back to last off-season, this point, April last year, everyone's getting snapped up in, in free agency. Bang, 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 everyone's getting picked up. Not Majuk Deng. Yeah. And I'm up in Brisbane, the under-18 nationals. I go to one of Derek Rucker's workouts and Majuk Deng's where I'm like, Majuk, what's... And he's like, eh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And Scott Roth picks him up. You remember Rashad Tucker? Mm-hmm. I talk to Tucker a lot. Right? Mm-hmm. That's his individual trainer. That's the guy that looks after him. Mm-hmm. In the offseason. From back in Adelaide? Back in Adelaide. Now, Rashad called me at the beginning of the year. We had a little bet. He, he reckoned Tasmania was going to win the championship. And I said, are you kidding me? And he said, Majuk Ding will play great. Now, since he started playing well in this game the other night, I've had Rashad on the phone five times. I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. Because the guy is full of confidence, and he works extremely hard. Rashad said he works out every single day. He'll train, and he'll get his own workout in afterwards, and he was ready for this this time. So was Rashad Tucker right about both things? He was right about Majuk Dang. He was right about Madrid name. Was he right that the Jack Jumpers are going to win the I fight? don't know. How, how do we know? How do uh, we know? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Well, we just don't know, do no, we? Oh, oh, come on, man. man. Is that a chair or a seat? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying, we, you know. Uh, but we'll get to you. Before the show is out, Leonard Copeland will give a definitive opinion on who's going to win I will. the championship. I will. Good. I'm glad. Let's, let's go because Madrid Deng yep. and the fact that he played the five in the fourth quarter led to JLA having yeah. to be benched. We've seen the big three point mm-hmm. play that Deng. Was able to uh, able to hit in this situation. So that was sweating. Four minutes. That was sweating. Now yeah. with the matchup, they knew Joe Lawal couldn't get out to him and couldn't stay in front. So he runs him off the three-point line, Thousand. then the M1. And so Dino says, Ah, you know what? We can't do it. We can't keep Joe Lawal or Hook Porty uh, on the floor. And this is the moment when this is the moment when Dean Vickerman blinked for me. They were eye to eye, they were staring each other down, Scott Roth and Dean Vickham and Tasmania and Melbourne United. And I think Vicko blinked in that moment. I think he overreacted. I think down the other end, yeah, I think so. I think down the other end, they were still getting good stuff out of the advantage that they had. Right. The Joe Lawal Chul seal down low and the finish over the top. Um, the, the, the find on Travis mm. cutting to the rim because they were doubling JLA in the post. Needed to lean into where they had the advantage. Yes, they needed to change something up at the defensive end, but it was reactive. It was a win to Tasmania. Scott's move of small ball and the plays by Majuk Deng played Hook Porty and Joe Luala Chul off the floor. And from there, it was advantage to Jack Jones. Let me tell you why I thought it was, it was a good move by Dean, because that wasn't the only play that JLA messed up on. I mean, a lot of times when Milton Doyle was coming off that high screen and knocking down threes, 
He was, he was leaning back. He was, he, look, he's too far back. He's in drops. You've been hanging on a second. It's the second quarter, bro. This is the second quarter. Of course. So, hang so on. what Danny's thinking is, I can't afford to let this, let people go at him like that. I got to get him out of there. Do, do you think, though, that is a coaching strategy and how they're, they're expecting and guarding Milton Doyle or not? Now, there's a little bit of angst here between JLA and, and Dean Vickerman. The body language wasn't great from JLA. And uh, you can see it in the background there. They're having the discussion about how best to guard, or has he done it the right way? Is that a coaching, mate? Is that a coaching point of view or not? We don't know what 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 they decided to do, yeah. but but at the end of the day, he wasn't happy. You, you cannot be in drops when you got a guy coming off of high screen and shooting that well. Milton mm. Doyle knocked down two That's threes. There. I don't care if Dean says drop. You, you as a player, he's been the MVP. You got to get up and get a hand mm. on a guy who shoots that well. Hey, listen, and then one, on the, one of the things Dean Vickerman does terrifically well is he keeps his guys accountable at the defensive end. Of course, event. of course. He's done, that's why his team's a good defensive team. And that's why he took Josh Boone was all NBL first team, and he was an easy selection for it. He was one of the best players in the league yeah. the year they won the title in 2018. Yeah. I remember a game against you guys when you had Jeremy Tyler. Mm. And first play of the game, Tyler catches in the post, turns around, raises up, kisses it off the glass. Vickerman pulls Boone out after 30 seconds. You remember this? Yes, I do. And he tells him, hey, listen, like, it's the top thing on the scouting report. We said you've got to make him put it on the floor. Mm. Sit your butt down on the bench. He keeps guys accountable. And that's what he was doing with Joe Lawal and Schultz right. there. But I just think that the, the, the chess match that took place in the fourth quarter then, if it was not... If, if it was not JLA, go, go back to Hook Porty and challenge him to be able to sit down and stay in front of Majuk Deng. But they needed to, I think that it was a reactive move that, that played into the hands of Scott Roll. Hashtag NBL Overtime. And I know there's been a little bit of uh, scepticism about my time management when it comes to people firing stuff in. Mm -hmm. So I have cleared Seg 4 today, by the way. So oh, make sure you get involved, you can involve right. any of this. Oh, and I'm going to ask you straight off, off, off the bat, are you ready for yeah, this? Yeah. Is this a flop? Let's have a look at this. This is Will Magno, of course, and uh, Matthew Dallavadova. Now, that is a flop, which led to a technical foul because they'd already had a flopping warning. There's been a little bit of flopping from both teams in this that particular That is not series. a flop. That is. can't be serious. I, I actually sent a really good tweet. Oh, oh my God. Look at the God. elbow. Look at the elbow. I did. I sent a really good tweet on Sunday that said, if that's a flop, I'm an Olympic high jumper. That would be uh, at Cam <laughs> Oh, no. That, 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 and this is what the issue is. is right that's... now. He hit him. I know Daly's a lot smaller than Will Magno, but this is that was that, that's a... Shocking call, right? We, we all agree? Terrible yes. call. Yes. Perfect. Is there any way, because there's been a lot of flopping in this series, right? And for both teams. So yes. I'm not singling out yes. any particular way. It, has it been refereed correctly? Has it been made harder by the fact that some of these guys are you know, trying to get the advantage in major moves? I think what they're refereed quite well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jack McVeigh turns around, goes to try to flop with that turnaround jumper on yeah. Chris Golding. And the ref just says, no, nah, nothing yeah. there. Now, that was a bad call. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of guys have been rewarded for flopping in this series. I think they're calling it pretty, especially that game, mm. I thought they called particularly well. Mm. It was physical, but they called not too physical. They got that call wrong, but I think for the most part, they're doing a good job. I don't know what the referees do. I know in the NBA, they, they pull the captains together and say, look, this is the way we're going to call it. We're going to call it light. We're going to call it heavy. If, and just mention, look, guys, if you if you if I see a flop, I'm going to call a technical foul straight away, just to scare these guys away from flopping <laughs> and playing defense. Yeah. Just to put it in their heads. Mm. I and mean, it's not going to hurt them to say that, so they know. So when you do call it, there's no no feed, no talking, mm. no follow up or whatever. But I just think somebody needs to tell these guys because it's too much. It's too much of that flopping, man. I I, I, I think much. we've had this discussion a lot on this show. I I, I think if you flop, you just need to get scored on. <laughs> like, let, let, let him go. Let I him understand. sit. Let him sit. Uh, let him yeah. sit. Let him sit. If you're going to flop and the, and the guy's going to score on it, don't, don't stop the game. Don't call a flopping. Don't worry about that. Just because sooner or later, if you keep flopping and you keep getting scored it's on. It's five on four. It's yeah. five yeah. on four. Yeah. It's going to hurt you. Hey, while we're on the refs, yeah. Melbourne United need to get off the refs. Mm. That's right. There's way too much focus That's on right. the calls yes. and the wiggling of the yeah. finger and the yeah. asking for the review. First play of the game. <laughs> now, you've got to have a next play mentality you got to huddle up, get organised, be on the same page and yeah. stop getting totally distracted. Now, Delhi, uh, Delhi is a big part of that for me. Mm. Now, De I, I, Delhi, I love how focused he is, how intense he is, how competitive he is, um, but he's got to keep his focus, I think, on all the right things in mm. this game four and potentially game five. They got overturned that too, didn't it? As well, that particular review there. But it, it, is, it is interesting because... It, <laughs> Thursday night's going to be insane. We're going to build up to it on the other side of this. But the joint is going to be rocking. Everyone's going to have to keep 
their emotions. Both players on both teams, the coaches, coaches. the referees, the idiots in the fourth row. Like we're all going to have to idiots. try to keep an even. I stood myself and put my hand up. Okay. I did. Oh, you didn't say that. So I'm just. You sure you got a ticket? Just, yeah, you got I'm a ticket? Are you talking Are you about? sure you have a ticket? Yeah, I have got a ticket. 100% got a ticket. What I don't have is a ride from the airport to my hotel. So any Jack Jumper oh, fan wow. who wants this to guy, pick me up, nah, uh, slide into my door. What that. is wrong with this guy, man? <laughs> Look at that, Jack McVay, bang, plenty more as we build up to your oh. game four on the other side he of this. What's a free ride? <laughs> NBL overtime. No one giving you a ride, man. <laughs>
next possession and they chew away at it bit by bit. It's not all of a sudden they're back. It's, uh-oh, here they're here they coming come, and yeah. we just can't score all of a sudden. We can't score. We can't stop them. They chew away at it. They're the so great in terms of that next play mentality. And, and their consistency allows them to win moments, right? I, I think, again, we, we touched on this at different times. Melbourne United, their, their ceiling has probably been higher with their actual moments of maybe quarters of play in the series. But the actual consistent play of the JJs, which is their brand since day dot and Scott Ross started preseason, you know, three and a half years ago, is the fact they are never out of games. And they just always believe... Look, I said this after a red wine or two on Sunday. I reckon Scott Ross could maybe <laughs> two. allow me. Right, I reckon I'll get five or six points in a Scott Ross system. No, you won't. I don't know. Yeah, true belief. No. no. Tongue in cheek a little bit. But my point is, <laughs> every single player, absolutely. Like, Chris Levich comes in, bang, bang, quick five points. Not, not a guy you're expecting to play a huge role in a grand final series on the road. Rolls on in. Sean McDonald, outstanding. Their ability to never panic is the reason that they know if they're 10 points down three quarter time, we're going to stay here. We're going to stay here. We're going to play this level all the way to the end. So this is the interesting part about it is mm. that they have been... Look at these numbers. Talk me through it, Cam. You're the man. Well, the obviously, house. biggest lead, Melbourne United, 23 points. Belgium would have been game one, as we know, right? Outside of that, an eight-point lead has been the biggest lead for the JJs in the huh. series. Right. Now, they haven't even led for half the game at all in the first three games. Have a look at game three there. They led for two and a half minutes. Their biggest lead was three. They won the game by two. Mm. And Melbourne United have had big leads. Game ben. one, you can roll up. That game, game two, that 15 points was halfway through the third quarter yeah. when we all thought, hang on a second, if Tassie don't find any type of spark, this thing which, might be done soon. Which, which is why, which is why anybody who's burying Melbourne United at this point, I think it's going a little too far. Now break these ones down for me, Cam. Well, have a look at this in the paint, which is the big one, of course. Uh, I think is game one is one? somewhat, somewhat a little bit redundant now because I think Tazzy came in a little uh, leg tied. But since then, look at Tazzy. Bench points, their ability to again well, bench, go So deep. bench points, 16 in yeah. game three, to, mm. right? Massive. And a lot of that is, is, is Majuk Ding yeah. coming yeah. off the bench. And what it's ball. not is Ian Clark. Yeah. Ian Clark in game mm. one was right. a game breaker. They right. need him coming up big. Hey, I actually think that Ian Clark's the most important person in the NBL on Thursday night. Because if he is able to get going and have a Do huge you? one... Yeah, if, if Ian Clark Chris plays Golding. really I think well, Chris Golding. Uh, look, I, I think Chris Golding's going to give 20 points. I, I think Chris Golding is going to be able to play the, the way he is. And he was pretty good, in particular in the second half when his shot wasn't dropping in the first half. I expect Chris Golding to get 20 points and be a huge contributor. They need Ian Clark off the bench to be able to bring something. We know he can, right? Ian Clark seemed to me in game three the other night a little wound up. He was like a, a, a coiled spring, just mm -hmm. ready. To, you know, he had that moment where he was going to throw the rock. Yeah. At, it was at the ref or yeah, Sean McDonald yeah, yeah, yeah. or what? I don't know. The Melbourne United need to... They look like they've got the weight of the world on mm -hmm. their shoulders. And they do right now because yeah. the season's on the line. But they've got to, like... They're not entitled to this championship. No. It, they're not. A lot of people think they are. Well, and there's a sense like maybe they think they are because yeah. they've been on top of the table all year. They've just got to calm down and realise you just got to you've got to do it out there on the floor, possession by possession. You know why I think it needs to be Chris Golding though because he's your leader, and when you see him going, there's a there's a sense of e you feel ease now. Oh, we got our man going. Yep. Let's get on the same page now and get this win. When you see him knocking down those threes, when, when that thing's going down. You know you got a chance. So this was how they got up by 15. Yeah. Of course, because he's, he's, he's got it going. He's going to work. Yeah. Let, let me point this out. He is their best player. Yes. Right. And they go on the back of him. But I fully expect him to roll in on Thursday night and play well. Why I think Ian Clark is vitally important is one their bench scoring and their ability when they go into the bench. Which Ian Clark is a superstar. He's won a championship in the NBA. The NBA. We know who he is. The fact is that he hasn't played as great in major moments in games two and three. But this team, I think he can. This team has so many talented offensive players. Yeah. Travers can, can score. Della Vadova can score. Travis the bigs, the bigs can score. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you need that scoring off the bench. Yeah. But if you don't get it, you still got enough guys on that starting five who, if Chris is not scoring, yeah. they, can, they can get the job done. Here's what happens, though, down in Tassie. Roll the vision of the Tassie defense in game two because this is, we've talked about Melbourne's defense all season long, but they locked down. Yeah. They, they were, it, when they got down by 15, they didn't storm back by lighting the place up. No. They locked Melbourne 
down in those moments here in this second half, these possessions where they fought their way back in the game. And it's that cauldron-like atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's that atmosphere that RAC Arena was back when they were keeping teams in the yeah. 60s. <laughs> the Perth Wildcats with Damian Martin. And the pressure builds and builds and builds as you're not scoring the ball. If they defend at that level, it's going to be very hard for Ian Clark. Chris Golding, Joe Luala Chul, anybody to get going. I just want to shout out Anthony Drimmick, actually, just briefly yeah. now, because he's got the biggest job in the series, having to guard Chris Golding. Yeah. And again, probably not dissimilar to the conversation we had about Bryce Cotton. You're never going to stop these players because they're superstars, but you need to make it as hard for that player for 40 odd minutes or however long you're on the court to make sure that they don't go bang and get the energy. And I think Drimmick has, has done a really good job of just continually being in Chris Golding's pocket. Chris Golding has the hardest job on the team, though. I, and I say this all the time. He has to score for them to win. I mean, he needs to score for them to win, okay? He needs to get going. But the amount of attention that he gets throughout a game is unbelievable. The Bryce Cottons. Because your scouting report is about shutting him down, running him off the three-point line. Yeah, but so when he comes off the screen, there somebody, should be somebody in his face. So when he's making – he makes these tough shots, and we think, oh, wow, he's a great shooter. He's a super great shooter yeah. because some of the shots he makes – no one else can make. But in in no saying that, that's what the superstars around the world in basketball have to deal with. Of course. With, right? You've been in this of situation. Course. You've had to deal with it when you've rolled in a series. So that, that's what makes him great because he makes these 100%. shots when all the defence or a majority of defence is geared towards slowing him down. Big question coming into game four. Is Marcus Lee mm. going to play? Because... Do you think, do you think, do you think it's going to hurt them if he doesn't? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You don't? I think with... The addition of Ding now with yeah. his confidence and the way he plays. Magna is a different beast in that city. Mm -hmm. All right, so yes, it might hurt him, but they have so many weapons. They, again, another team with a lot of weapons. Yes, they'd love to have Lee on the floor, mm -hmm. but he's not playing, he's not scoring a whole lot of points. His defense is better. He's not, he's not a focal point of their offense. Yeah. He's, he's big. Now, but they got guys who can replace. I, got, I think they got guys who can but you replace. Need, you need, and you don't say this about an import often, but those spot minutes when he comes in is allowing Magna. If Magna gets an early foul trouble right. situation, which unfortunately he is at times prone to find himself in. Look, you just want to have all the different... You want everyone to You want all your tools. Yeah, you want you want all your so you can go to whatever yeah. you need to go Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. He, yes, you can go to the Majuk thing and the small mm -hmm. ball lineup. You can go to Krizlovic and use those things. But yeah. you want to be able to have Magna of course. and Lee. Because, you know, this battle of the bigs... Yeah. They've been playing each other kind of to a bit of a stalemate these last couple of games. Mm. Joe Luala Chul was a dominant force in game one. If any one of those guys, if Mag Magne or JLA or Hook Porty starts to really... As I think Hook Porty should play more, yeah. just quietly. I agree. Yeah, I'm I agree. And that's with my next star's hat on, off, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. He, he, I don't know why he keeps coming out of the game so quickly. We're going to change a good impact. We're going to change that yes or no question later on. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but I agree. Is, yes. he, he's, and he's a guy. You're talking energy. When you need these, these moments in big times, he just feels like a guy who plays really they, freely. They he takes good the when he's up. out there. Yeah. They do. They do. All right. Who wins? I think Melbourne wins game four and they come back and it's a toss-up game five. Okay. Hmm. I, I think with, with the pressure on – Melbourne United have stood up. It's hard to beat that team three times, especially mm. three times in a row. Okay? Mm. Now, if Jack Jumpers win, they deserve to win. Yeah. I'm not saying they won't. These teams are even. But you know how hard it is to beat a team three times in a row? And especially this team, we haven't lost. Yeah. Two know, we're, we're not going to be back at this desk before game five. Okay. If Melbourne win game four, what happens? <laughs> so you're, you're predicting them to win the title, yeah, right? You just said that, right? On me. Come on, bro. If Melbourne win game four... <laughs> well, if I mean, they win yeah. game four, if they don't win what it, does he win it? So who wins the title? Uh, who wins it? Think Melbourne wins game four and then... Melbourne win game four. Bang. I think Tassie win game four. Mm. Ooh, right. okay. Hashtag NBL overtime to get him. Hold on. You say yeah, what yeah, what about you, bro? Is that what you think? Put the pressure on us. Oh, uh, this yeah, guy. Yeah, no. What's, What's going to happen? Gonna win? I think Melbourne United will win game four and Tassie will win game five. Whoa. Plenty more Whoa. on the other Whoa. side of this. <laughs> right around Australia. NBL overtime, we're firing up for game four, but still a fair bit of news getting around. Olga Nulik joins us, ESPN Zone. Hello, buddy. Hey, what's going on? I got my flights booked for Hobart, so that's a Ooh, you got Ooh, you on his plane? I'm a member of the media, so oh, I have a right. seat. I do squeeze. What was that? On, the, on, his, on yeah. his jet? Yeah. Nah. 
Thank Absolutely you. not on the jet. Jet is the correct terminology, yeah. by the way. Uh, yeah, don't let him be negative. You ride from the yeah. airport to the, I use, to the stadium. I use the word jet, as you directed me to. I'm, go I'm going to say that every team in the league right now, outside of the two teams in the grand final series, are trying to call Will McDowell White. Would, would I be correct? Uh, you are correct. Yeah. From what I understand, there are only three teams who haven't showed interest internally about Will McDowell White. Yep. They're the Cairns Taipans, Melbourne United and the Illawarra Hawks. Every other team in the league has interest in Will McDowell-White. We went through this last off-season as yep. well. The idea of Will McDowell-White as a big local starter-level point guard. If you can get someone like him, marquee him, gives you a lot of flexibility with the rest of your roster. Player option for Will McDowell-White on a good number. Correct. Why would he not stay in New Zealand? There is the idea of potential security if he can go and lock in a three-year deal on a similar or bigger number. Um, there's not, no certainty that he will get a similar or bigger number, and he's yet to make a decision on that player option. So I'll stress that too. There is a chance that he stays in New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand does have a desire to keep him. They want to continue to build around him. But if he does choose to opt out of that player option, there are other teams out there. Some of them will be willing to pay him for, for a good amount of years. Just for clarity, is he able to sign a new deal, say a three-year deal at New Zealand, or is that against the rules because he already has a... No, they can player. renegotiate. So he, they can renegotiate. I mean, so, you yeah. could theoretically just yeah. opt out of the player option and, and then renegotiate. And re-sign again. Yep. It, out of all these teams that are reaching out, do you have a sense of New Zealand versus who? Who would be the primary contenders? It's really... It's too early to say. Uh, one team that I think is maybe a smoky and all this are the jack jumpers. And granted, that is a little bit further down the line. They've got to get through this championship series first. But they're a team that was really high on him last season, very close to getting his signature last season. So I am, that, that'll be in the in the sweepstakes again. Uh, Adelaide is another team that is sort of ready to throw a significant amount of money at someone like Will McDowell White. Whether they actually get that done, whether he wants to go and be part of that team is a different question. They're two teams that... I, I think we'll be in the mix, but I, I, again, I wouldn't rule out New Zealand because there's still mutual interest. Why the smoke? Why yeah, the he smoke? said Adelaide. And you why know why the smoke? Smoke? I said it a month ago. I, I firmly believe that Adelaide should go very similar to the Melbourne United, if not all Australians, maybe one import only, and have DJ and oh, McDowell White as their starting so, backcourt. So Corey was here uh, motivating the players. Mm -hmm. You think you're out there motivating the GM? I don't think I'm motivating. I think I'm simply reflecting what I've heard. Oh, okay. oh. And another team that I think will strongly be in the mix are the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Yeah, that'd be good. They place. do have a desire to, to start anew mm -hmm. with what they've got. I have reporting that there'll be a team that shows a ton of interest in Geordie Hunter as well. And so you can imagine the potential partnership of McDowell and Geordie Hunter mm. in the pick and roll. That could be that could be really fun. Hey, can Stipans get some bad news? Uh, yes. Uh, we, we flagged this a few weeks mm -hmm. ago as well. Uh, Bull Kowal has informed the Taipans that he won't be returning. Uh, and he is one of the marquee level, one of the top free agents on the market right now. There are a bunch of teams interested in him. Sydney Kings, you can see him playing at Kudos Bank Arena. Is this coincidence that this vision has him playing at Kudos Bank Arena? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, the Sydney Kings and uh, the South East Melbourne Phoenix, they're two teams that I think are the hottest on him. Illawarra Hawks and New Zealand Breakers are also super interested in Bull Kowal, but my feel, and I said this on the Marketplace, an episode we dropped today with Jack Evans and Pete Hooley, my feel is that it'll come down to the Kings and the Phoenix. You know, some of, I think some of these players have to be careful. Yes, go get your money, but... The, the, the teams you're playing for now, the coaches are letting you do your thing mm -hmm. and you're playing great. That's why other teams are chasing you because you're playing so great. Mm -hmm. Don't end up leaving because of the money and, and go play for somebody who's not going to give you that same opportunity. Uh, like a DJ Hogue who we know can play, but he just played better in Cairns yeah. than he did in Sydney. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you know, I, go ahead. No, no, you go. No, I'm really interested in what you <laughs> Well, I think both of those men are going to get the same, whatever position they feel they want to play, that's going to come into decision-making, right? So yep. it's not like Will McDowell-White's going to go somewhere else and all of a sudden he's going to play a different role to what has made him successful. And I also think that with Paul Qual as well. DJ Hogue, I think a little bit was on him. He came in with an injury, so I don't think necessarily they thought he's going to play a different role than what he did in Cairns. He just didn't play to the level. But not even a different role. role. you got people around you, different people around you. So what makes you think you might end up doing or playing the same way? It might be a, diff mm. a different uh, uh, team or it might be a different structure. Well, well look, the grass is always green. There's pros and cons to it, Cape, right? Of course. Right? Well, look, on DJ Hogue, who we're seeing mm -hmm. the vision of right now, I'm told that a team that... I heard a whisper that the Cairns Taipans have sort of internally had a thought about bringing TJ Hogue back wow. into the mix. And so you talk about TJ Hogue looking his best as a Cairns Taipan. Mm. There has to be a decision made on his mutual option with the Sydney Kings. With the incoming signing of Xavier Cooks, it seems unlikely that they will be able to have Cooks and Hogue 
And so, even even though there is theoretically a world where they can play, they can play together. Yeah. But you go down. If, <laughs> but if, what are you laughing for? <laughs> Time for him to come. Eat. Yeah. I agree. Twenty five minutes next season. Let's All go. Right. I think I think Alex Stewart should probably start at the three. Yeah, he's stepping up on me, isn't he? Yeah. But it, it, it seems as though there will probably be a parting of ways between Hogan and the Kings. That decision has to be made. There's a mutual option there. Uh, if that's the case, and that the Taipans are a team that I think will show some interest in having Hogue return. Interesting. There's no yeah. swap, man. It's a good point that you made, though, before about those guys. I yeah. think back to a guy like Todd Blanchfield. Yep. Most improved player in Townsville, small market team. Mm -hmm. All NBL second team. Yes. Was really starting to blossom in that system with Sean Dennis. And then he went and took the bag at Melbourne United. Everyone's chasing him, yes. And they had so much talent. He didn't get... He, and his game plateaued. Yep. Yep. It didn't continue to rise. Um, sometimes the grass is not greener and the best uh, where you are. Now, Bullqual did do that last season. Yeah. He could have gone and gotten a big pay packet somewhere else. He re-signed with the Taipans mm. and stayed with Adam Ford. Just, you just mentioned Geordie Hunter, just quickly. Uh, is, is South East Melbourne Phoenix the, the main team if it's not Sydney Kings? That's what I've been told. Yeah. The, the talks right now are far apart. There are some sticking points with yep. the, the negotiations between Hunter and the Sydney Kings. And, the Phoenix are a team that, uh, that I think will show a ton of interest in Geordie Hunter. But who else is keen to get involved with Geordie Hunter? Well, there aren't many teams out there with the spot for Geordie Hunter, and that's the problem. And so the Phoenix isn't just the intel that's telling me this. It's also just you can rule out a whole bunch of teams who already have that position locked in. So Sydney don't want him? I mean... Oops. Sydney does want him. Right. Yeah. Uh, but there is a sticking point when it comes to those negotiations, right. and so it seems unlikely at this point that they're going to be able to agree on something. Is the sticking point cash? Not from what I understand. Did he get upset that they went after Isaac Humphries? No. What, what's the sticking point? There's a sticking point when it comes to negotiations. <laughs> it's not cash. That's not cash. Okay. Kyron Galloway, what can you tell mm. me? So Kyron Galloway, we saw the way he ended the season with the Adelaide 36ers. Uh, you can see what, uh, what he can bring to teams, mm. right? The athleticism, yep. the, the jump shot. Uh, Adelaide does want to retain him. They've made no secret about that. They've, they're trying very, very hard to retain him. It seems like he's going to strongly consider his options elsewhere. And the two Queensland teams are the ones that are preparing to show the strongest interest, so the Bullets and the Taipans. And out of those two teams, I, I understand that the Bullets are in advanced talks with Deng Adel to likely fill a similar spot. So Deng Adel would play with the Illawarra Hawks a few years ago. Seems like he'll be back in the league, probably with the Brisbane Bullets. And so... The Kyron Galloway sweepstakes, those two Queensland teams, the spot is there in Cairns that I don't believe will be there in Brisbane. Mm. So the spot in Cairns feels like that Sam Meninga spot, That's right? what it feels mm. like. Because he's a 4-5. Deng Adele feels like a slightly different guy. I mean, I, I think Deng Adele is more of a 2-3, two, two, three. right? right? Uh, but 6-7, there's something there athletically and skill-wise that I think... The, the bullets like the, the Casey Prather role from this past season that Dengar Del could potentially go into. We'll see what happens there because he wasn't great the last time he was here. Mm. Hey, uh, you can get deeper into this if you want to watch uh, NBL Market Watch, which is on the NBL the app, nbl.com.au. On, What's it called? The Marketplace. Oh, the Marketplace. <laughs> Okay. Oh, is it? I should, Hashtag NBL free to, to be fair, I should know the name of the show. I started it, so uh, oh, anyway, whatever it is. Alrighty, okay. What's it called, actually? The Marketplace. The Marketplace. What is this show? .au. You, you, <laughs> watch, you watch it, right? You watch it? No. Nah. Oh, this come is, on. Also, yeah. watch it. How the bloody hell do I know the questions to ask him? How do, I, how do you think I knew the Geordie Hunter thing? Okay. Did you watch it this morning? Yes, sir. Who was the star? Olgan. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. you, man. Uh, Thank you. 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 <laughs> right around Australia, wherever you might be, NBL overtime as you work our way through what is going to be almost a sleepless 48 hours before Game 4 on Thursday night in Tassie. I'm pumped up. And got a little bit of um, feedback. Constructive criticism, Emma okay. said, yeah. that I often say, hashtag NBL over time to get involved. And then there's so much going on, we run out of time. Mm -hmm. So I've cleared the whole segment to answer some questions. Are you ready to get into this? Do, do we already have Are we answering segment? the questions or are you answering the questions? No, you're going to answer Okay, the let's go then. Okay. All right. All right. Does everyone, let's start with this one. Does everyone agree? This is from our man Pringle underscore four. Yep. Tazzy, Tazzy's no longer the underdog. Absolutely. Now... Melbourne United were the top of the table all season. Mm -hmm. They come into the series as the championship favourites, deservedly so. But the, are they the, still the underdog story? Yes and no. I mean, yes, they still are an underdog in the sense that this, it was only a little minute ago that they, were the, they came into existence. Yeah. Right. 
and they're a small market team and they've so on and so forth. So yes, in that sense, but on the floor in terms of what their team can achieve, no, they're no underdog. I can explain it even better. I, I think you're right. They are the underdog, but what they've done over the last three years tells me they're not really the underdogs. They're going to come and let you know we're here to play. Like L man Trent Boss. I still think they're going to lose the series. I don't think, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, man. No, no, don't, don't go. L man me. Trent Boss, I'm going to go to you here, Copes. All right. Was it a Tassie comeback or a Melbourne United collapse? It was a Tassie comeback, and yeah. they've been doing that all year. And they've been doing it the last two or three years. Anytime they get down, they call their little timeout. Roth gives that little speech, fires them up. <laughs> they come out and get the job done, mm. either defensively or offensively. It's slow cooking. It's slow cooking, but they mm. get the job done. And they're in most, and, and it's proven throughout this year where they lose, whenever they lost, it was maybe one or two points or whatever. So mm -hmm. they're in most games. So we're yeah. talking about game two or game three? Game three. It was both. Mm -hmm. it, it, can was, be, it can be both things at the same time. Okay. Melbourne collapsed. Well, I mean, Delhi threw the turnover. It's one of the mm. most, the biggest turnovers in the history of the league. And, um, you know, other guys needed to do better to get open. Just on that, I just want to point this out. They're not in front with that Matthew Della Davis last three. That's, right. uh, you're, that's a I, very, I, very I, good I think point. That, right. And it gets lost because of the moment. It's a and very I good point. It, but his last three or four minutes big, in this series. Big players. His whole huge. game, really. Yeah. yeah he's been big players. Big, big players. Yeah. No, you're 100%. Um, but, but defensively, they started... They I think Vickerman tightened up when he made that call to go small and react. But at the same time, you can't take anything away from what Tazzy did in the comeback and what Jack McVeigh did in that moment. Absolutely. Max McDonald, would Perth be better next year, starting point guard next to Bryce Cotton? Mm -hmm. Ty Webster, currently there, mm -hmm. or Will McDowell White? Will McDowell White. Yeah. Now, no disrespect to Ty Webster or whatever kind of disrespect it is, but Will McDowell White's a better player. And I think he'd be a better fit next to Bryce Cotton. Mm, I, I like him. I agree 100%. The way he plays, what he's done, and the way he passes the ball and gets other guys involved. And then, and, and then when you stand off him, he can knock that shot down consistently. I like Will McGowan White. Aqua. Aqua, a.k.a. W.A. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Barbie Girl. 888. Eight, eight. Oh, no. Okay. Can we get NBL salaries released? Why? I don't, Why? I don't know. Why would you want to know what someone else... I don't know what you're making. Why would you want to know what I'm making? I, I, I want to know what you're making. What, what are you making? Not enough. Okay. <laughs> not what is Aqua making? You asking these questions. What is he? What does he do for a living? And what is he making? Aqua is. Oh, a, no, he, hey, he, did, he did. He's, he's a carpenter and he's on seventeen dollars an hour. Hey, don't come at Aqua. <laughs> I'm not going against that man. No, yeah. I'm not going against him. I'm so you're saying, anti Aqua. You know, I'm anti putting <laughs> salaries up because you get a, a lot of knuckleheads out yeah. there Ooh, that want to blame people there we go. because they missed a couple of shots. You shouldn't be on this much money. Mm. So I just think, look. Leave it alone. Guys are making good money. You know, we all know what, mm. which guys are making the most money and which guys aren't making a lot of money. Just leave it alone. You won't believe it. We've actually got a graphic with our salaries here. <laughs> Is that right? My, 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 my <laughs> name's not even on there. My name's not even on there. What do you make of it? For free. It is a conversation in all Australian sports at yep. different points. What do you make of it? I wouldn't mind an adjustment to the way it's currently done whereby the um, team spends were released at the end of the year yeah, yeah. Okay. to show both their spend in the cap mm. and their team overall spend. Mm -hmm. But I don't think... And currently that gets out there because people around the league leak that to yep. certain reporters. Yep. But I wouldn't mind if there was a change that allowed that to happen. Yeah. But I don't think we need the individual salaries. Agreed. Now. Couldn't agree more. How was Adelaide... This is from Seb Party 12. How has Adelaide not signed Daniel Johnson yet? Which is one that surprised me a little bit because i kind of not, not forgotten about Daniel Johnson, legend, but he wasn't front of mind. Do you, do you think this is a possibility? Uh, I think it... Maybe. Mm -hmm. Get off the fence. This is not yes or no, right? Get off the That's fence. Not. That's this, not. Okay. You can... Oh, hold on. You, you think they're going to sign Daniel Davis. Johnson? No, no. I think Dan, they, they passed Daniel Johnson. I think I love him. I love yeah. the way he plays. He'll do. But I just think that the new team in now... They're running, they're up and down, they're playing defense. And yeah, I mean, time yeah. to move on from Daniel Johnson. I agree with you, yeah. but it's not what we would do. It's what what do you think they're going to do? Yeah. I don't think they're going to sign him. Okay. But he's a crowd favorite. Crowd love him, but I just think... Yeah. Gourlay Gaw Rob asking, does Delhi wins too much, Copes? Oh, come to me first, huh? Well, you were quite... You were quite... <laughs> well, I, in the air break. I think Delhi <laughs> needs to concentrate on being Delhi and playing great mm -hmm. defense and playing the style of offense he's been playing all year long. And leave the referees alone because you can lose you lose focus mm -hmm. when on the first play of the of the of the game three you start.
twirling your finger, yeah. calling for a, for a replay. Now let it go, man. Let he's an go. intense competitor, but he needs to realize his teammates take their cues from him as well. Right. Alex, so if he's on the refs, they'll get on the refs. Alex McClendon said, when we will get the next expansion team in brackets, Ooh. Canberra. Bring back the cannon, says Alex. You, you, two years, three years? We, we're close, right? It feels like we're getting Would close. not shock me if we've got some in place not next season, the mm. season after. To Perfectly shock done. You. No shock. No, I think the expansion team will be well and truly within the next two years. Canberra? Uh, it will not be. I don't believe it'll be Canberra. Ooh. Hey, Jack McVeigh, being unreal, of course, the shot. Is he is he getting closer to the Boomers, the Olympic team? Is he getting closer? Yes, by the day. Mm -hmm. Should he be on the team then? Is He'll that be in the question? squad. He should be invited, of course. He'll be in the yeah. squad, and then it's his job to get his way right. in there. All right, and the last question here, one I've been pushing for a long time. I think it's about the position arrow and the jump ball. We've seen a couple of big jump balls, or at least dives on in the games two and three. Is it time to bring back the jump ball as adults? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Beautifully done. All right, our main man. Corey Homicide Williams. Can't wait. I'm going to Tassie with him. I said, mate, we're going to Tassie. Yes. Have a look at this. The NBL Pass Player Welfare Fund. It is so great to see our man. He was at the game on Wednesday. Yep. Corey's fight. Make sure you donate now. Best way to go about it, if you can't find us, is go to all the NBL social media channels. They are there and you can get involved. And it is for the most amazing cause for the most amazing man. A quick break. The Yes or No Sting will debut on the other side of this. Are you going to watching or not? Uh, yes, sir. You going to stand us watching? Perfect. That's next as well. Just because it's a championship series, fellas, doesn't mean we don't have Santa's watching. <laughs> Salute! Love it. The captain, Clint Steindl, of course he made the free throw, but then go quiet again because he's going to shoot again. So, concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Madrug Dang. He's like, go in, go in. Oh, please go in. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's happy. Hey, that's the Scott Ross Cigar Lounge, by the way. Is it really? At the back there. And look at the cat, Floyd Mayweather, baby. I like it. Boy, Madeweather is part of the end army. Show. Beautifully done. All right, yes or no? Very the simple questions today. You ready? Mm -hmm. Would the NBL Blitz be better if we invited some international teams? Yes. Has Huck Porty played enough minutes in this series for you? No. Will Adelaide win a title before Cairns? No. Should we start the season with a double header open air extravaganza? No. Okay. Will there be minimum three NBL place based players on the Boomers Olympic team? No. If we went to game five, would we get 15,000 at Rod Laver on Sunday? Yes, indeed. Beautifully done. See you in Tassie. Game four. Enjoy. Let's go.